Welcome to The Art of Feminine Negotiation. I'm your host, Cindy Watson, and today I'm excited to introduce you to Vincent James. I've had the pleasure, met Vincent years ago, absolutely love the work that he's doing, and wanted to share it with you. We're going to be talking about how music can make you a better negotiator. So welcome, Vincent. Can't wait to dig in. Uh, thank you, Cindy. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know, Vincent James has graced stages all over the Philadelphia area and beyond. His musical repertoire includes a number of original love songs, which is kind of cool from his collection, as well as popular favorites from the 40s all the way to today. And his single One More Night was played on over 80 commercial radio stations, making the industry's Friday morning quarterback radio chart. So that's a pretty big deal. And media appearances over the years have included the Jenny Jones Show, QVC, NBC 10, NBC 10 rather, Show, Fox News, Fox's Good Day, CBC News, you name it, he's been there. So, and more recently, Vincent and his wife Joanne founded Keep Music Alive. It's a nonprofit on a mission to help more kids and adults reap the benefits of educational, therapeutic, and social benefits of playing music. And I, I just think it's a fabulous mission. So why don't you kickstart us, Vincent? Tell us about, I know you and your wife published uh, the 88 Ways to That Music Can Change Your Life book series. Tell us a little bit about the inspiration for that. Well, that's kind of how we got started, Cindy. You know, I've not been a lifetime musician, but music, music was never my full-time career, although it was my full-time passion. And then one day I was on a training call titled How Everyone Has a Book Inside Them They Need to Write. And I never thought I would be an author of any sort, didn't consider myself an expert in anything, but I'm on the call and I had this idea, what about a book of inspirational stories of how music impacted people's lives? And like, I got all excited, got the goosebumps, ran upstairs, saw Joanne, talked her into co-authoring the book with me and <laughs> we've been going ever since. I love uh, it. It's just, you know. We reached out to over 6,000 musicians all around the world asking for any stories they might have to contribute wow. to the book. We got hundreds in, edited it down, and put out the first book in 2015, and then a follow-up, 88 More Ways Music Can Change Your Life a couple of years later. And that's yeah. kind of really what got us kick-started on the whole music education advocacy road, which led to Keep Music Alive and everything else that we're doing. I love it. And do you see more 88 Ways Music Can Change Your Life coming down the pipes? If I can find the time, <laughs> yes. yeah, we're you... constantly hearing stories, but you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Important message though. And just for our listeners and our viewers out there as well, 50% of all book proceeds are donated to multiple organizations that Vincent and his wife, Joanne have targeted that will help put musical instruments and musical instruction into underserved schools and communities against such an important mission. So make sure to check that out. I think uh, there's a lot of merit there. You can have some very interesting stories and be doing good at the same time. So, yes, yes, thank you. And, and why don't we dig in and tell us, like, how can learning to play music make someone a better negotiator? What are some things that come to mind for you, Vincent? Well, it's funny, Cindy. I don't I consider myself an expert negotiator, but now, you know, when I think about it, you know, you know putting negotiation and the art of, you know, developing yourself as a musician. There are a lot of different traits that we have to develop as musicians that I see as parallels into being a good negotiator. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're learning to play music, you have to be patient. You know, you're not going to learn this piece right away. You're going to have to work through it, yeah. you know, a number of times to try to correct it. And when you're doing a negotiation, you know, you're not going to just bam, bam, bam and get to what you want. You know, there's an art form process you go through. And it also varies depending on who you're negotiating with and what you're negotiating about. Yeah. And so that patience that you inherently learn as a musician is one trait that can help you, you know, towards a better negotiation. Discipline yeah. is another one. You have to be very disciplined to practice, you know, frequently and often as a musician. And as a negotiator, you have to be disciplined to follow your process. Whatever you yeah. learn to be your best process for doing a negotiation, if you start to de you know, deviate from that, you're going to find your results you know, are not exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. And, and then, of course, there's perseverance. You know, how many times do we hear about negotiations that go on for hours or weeks or months? Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm looking at the actors <laughs> in writer's strike. Yeah. Sadly, yeah. <laughs> right now, you know, you have to be able, you know, assuming you don't have a team of negotiators, just maybe you're the main person negotiating yeah. for something with someone else. And it could be something, it doesn't have to be for a company. It could be just something that you're negotiating for yourself better deal for a house, a car, a job arrangement, whatever it yeah. is, you have to, you know, sometimes persevere and that, you know, 
you have to, even though you might be tired and have this feeling, I just want to give in because, you know, I'm tired. But if you persevere with your process and, and, you know, always thinking along the way of how you can best benefit, not just what you're looking for, but the party you're negotiating with, because really that's, you know, when you can see both sides of the story and what both sides can bring to the table and the benefits that you can have for each other, I think that puts you in a better position to be able to help negotiate a better outcome for, for both of you. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I want to just put a pin in that for our listeners, because really the, the art of feminine negotiation, that's sort of at the heart of it is getting away from that competitive mode to a more collaborative one where you're looking at for mutual benefits. And music is such a gorgeous expression of that, right? You've got the person playing who is giving, you've got the receiver, and there's a beautiful sort of symbiosis and <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. And I got to tell you, your your mission really resonates with me, Vincent, because, you know, I grew up in a low rental apartment complex in a pretty tough neighborhood and we did not have a little a, a lot of resources. But back then, at least music was funded in the school systems. And we'll circle back and talk about that in a little bit. But I had the opportunity to, you know, learn to play clarinet and I had no exposure to sort of music before I hit that middle school when it was mm-hmm. available and, you know, got pretty serious about it. And I hadn't really thought about it in terms of the negotiation piece until we started sort of just preparing for this interview. And I thought, you know what, like that music (laughs) gives you the confidence as well. Um, And confidence is so key in negotiations and also that creativity piece, which people often forget about negotiations. If you want to get the best negotiated outcomes, you need to be creative and and what better way to sort of spark that those creative juices than through the art of music? So what are your thoughts? I love, you know, bringing the creativity point into it because, you know, you may come to a negotiation, negotiation with like, you know, in your mind, these are these three things that I really want and need to get. Yeah. But over throughout the process of negotiating, you may realize, well, you know what? I can maybe live without this third one, but there's this other one I hadn't considered that, you know, this would also be beneficial to my side and maybe they'll, you know, be willing to to give in on that one because it would maybe benefit them as well. You know, just being flexible, uh, as you said, you know, and the creativity is allowing your mind to think outside the box, which is, you know, when we play music, it's one of the few things we do as humans yeah. that uses both the left side and the right side of our brain, the logical and the creative side. And by, you know, having that experience earlier in our life, you're building a bigger pipe there, allowing us to be more creative later on. Hmm, that's interesting. And funny, because as you j- just, you know, a millisecond before you said about flexible, I'm like, geez, that's all about flexibility, right? Which, again, <laughs> is one of the key components of my R fit model that you need to be able to bring that flexibility to taste. Sometimes we get so tunnel vision about what we think we want that we miss these incredible opportunities that are there if we could just let ourselves get a little more creative and flexible about it. So I absolutely yes. love that. And connection too, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, all these C's, creativity, confidence. Um, connection, but, right. Yeah. Yeah, building a rapport, you know, a true connection with the person yeah. you're dealing with because, you know, you're working with, because unless you have that symbiotic connection with that person, it's going to be really hard to see eye to eye in the end. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you, we need to like, just take a step back from our initial points and what we thought we were looking for. And look at the bigger picture and see, you know, what are some other ways we can maybe come to this agreement that would work for the benefit of both sides? Yeah. And one of the things you had mentioned while we were sort of working to to set up our uh, time for today, it was something about learning how learning to listen to music intentionally can also help you maybe become a better negotiator. I was interested to hear what you meant by that. What do you mean about how does listening to music intentionally uh, serve us? Well, music really has this magical power of kind of setting our tone, our, our mood inside us, mm-hmm. you know, and if you're getting ready to do a negotiation, uh, you know, some people might think, oh, I need to listen to music that's really going to pump me up and get me excited. And maybe that is what works for some people. But I see that more in the competitive <laughs> sense yeah. of it. But, you know, maybe listen to music that you find calming, relaxing and, and different music works better for different people. It could be classical, it could be jazz, it could be easy listening, vocal music. Whatever it is that kind of allows you to kind of meditate in the moment and just feel the moment and let the music kind of envelop you. And then, you know, meditation is so powerful. I mean, I do it as often as I can. Um, I do it with like instrumental music. And, you know, you you get ideas about how, you know, you might solve a particular problem. You know, I found both taking a walk and meditating are two powerful ways of 
coming up with new ideas of solving a problem that you might not have considered before. And yeah. music is also very grounding. You know, it just brings us kind of down to center. Yeah. And you want to be very centered, you know, and focused when you're working on a negotiation so that, you know, your person that you're negotiating with has your full attention. You're not, you know, distracted. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you want to put yourself on the mode. You know, I would highly recommend doing some sort of musical meditation prior to a negotiating session to just kind of get you in the, you know, it's one thing to study all night and be ready. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But then right before for 20, 30 minutes, whatever, just kind of just set the tone inside and relax and then come to it with a fresh mind, fresh heart. And I think you might achieve, achieve better results. Yeah. Vincent, that is a brilliant nugget. And, and with your permission, I may borrow that as I'm teaching. I, oh, absolutely. <laughs> I had not considered that before. I, you know, I talk about, I have all these this sort of methods about helping you to, as part of the preparation process that are a little outside the box. And one of them is about deciding who you want to be, right? Who do you want to show up as in this negotiation? And I had never thought, I'm embarrassed to say, to about using music to help that. But my gosh, it's so obvious when you say it, all right? <laughs> like, listen to music that sets the tone for the tone that you want to show up as, right? right? Listen to music that makes you breathe into who you want to be in that uh, in that that's particular a, that's negotiation. That's a perfect way to, I love how you just put that, breathe into the person you want to be. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Now tell us about Keep Music Alive. What is it and how did it start? So after we started with the book series, the very first book, uh, you know, I had the idea uh, there should be a week every year where musicians everywhere, you know, offer a free lesson to uh, someone they know. It could be a family member, it could nice. be a friend, coworker, or whatever it is. And that kind of evolved into us starting to reach out to music schools and say, hey, you know, what do you think about offering a free lesson to new students, kids or adults yeah. during this one week in the year? And that's what birthed the idea of Teach Music Week in March in 2015. We're actually coming up on the 10th annual next year. So there's That's... now over 1,200 music school stores and organization locations that offer a free lesson wow. or class, you know, for like music and movement groups to uh, kids and adults to try to get them started on their own musical journey. Yeah. And then was at another meeting once with someone who started something called Kids Yoga Day. And, you know, I'm like, Kids Yoga Day? kids yoga day i wonder <laughs> if there's a kids music day you know <laughs> yeah. and you know we were not at home on the computer pull out my phone looking you know is there such a thing no all right let's let's do it so that october in 2016 we started kids music day we partnered with the same over 1200 locations all 50 states wow. canada a dozen other countries to offer yeah. some sort of special event or promotion that benefits and celebrates kids playing music yeah. and that's just built up you know over the years and then a few years ago, we started doing something called musical instrument petting zoos, where locally here in the Philadelphia area, we go to schools, libraries, community festivals, and also partner with other nonprofits. And we bring guitars, ukuleles, keyboards, dozens of different types of percussion instruments for kids to interact with. Um, we're just trying to get them excited about wanting to play music. It's our way of getting them started on their musical journey. Yeah. My gosh, you are a man of action. Like, I love that about you. You know, you... <laughs> Come so many people, they're like, oh, geez, there should be whatever. Wouldn't it be nice? But I mean, you're like, hey, there's this gap. This is an important issue. Let's fill it. Like you got a national holiday. You've got 1,200 outlets out there that are helping to promote the message. I think that's gorgeous. And the petting zoo, that is brilliant. Musical instrument petting zoo. I just love that. What a great oh, concept. I have to thank you. I have to tell you, we did borrow that idea. We saw that out there. Someone else was doing that. They called it a musical yeah. instrument petting zoo. I'm like, Oh my goodness, that is so awesome. We're, we're going to keep spreading that out. <laughs> it's so great. Now, you've we've talked a little bit so far about how, you know, music can help with negotiation, which I think is something people don't often think about. But I'd love you to share a little bit. I know you're really passionate about why music education is so important for kids growing up. If you want to speak to that for a moment, Vincent, that'd be great. Sure, sure. And, you know, we talked a little bit about how, you know, kids learn to play music during their developmental years. Yeah. You know, they actually, the pipe between their left logical and right creative yeah. sides actually gets a little bit bigger. And this is how we get to creative problem solving, thinking outside the box. And then there's the research that shows the academic benefits, you know, the higher test scores in science, math, and reading comprehension. Yes. And then those soft, you know, I put in quotes, those soft skills, which are really pretty important that they develop, you know, the patience, discipline, perseverance, uh, building up their self-confidence, which, as you know, carries over to every other area of their life. Yeah. I mean, we like to say we're not trying to turn every child into be a professional musician, although some might be. We're trying to just give every child the best chance of succeeding no matter what career path they yeah. choose later. Yeah. 
That's so beautiful. And so, I mean, important always, but especially in these times, that creative problem solving, I mean, the world is becoming so polarized. And in the mm -hmm. US in particular, we are just seeing this dramatic polarization that doesn't serve anybody. And I think what's missing is some of that creative problem solving. And, and I love that you talked about the soft skills and sort of put it in air quotes, because <laughs> again, that's sort of at the heart of what prompted me to, to start this whole mission about the art of feminine negotiation because we so value the competitive and I think both men and women have started to see these so-called soft skills as feminine and therefore a liability and we've been stifling them when that's the only thing that's going to bridge the gap and ironically it's those yes. so-called soft skills that make for the best negotiators make for the best leaders so go ahead thanks for a better world Yes, yes, so important, and and it's one of the ways to cut through some of the polarization we're we're seeing. So the fact that music helps facilitate that, I mean, it just maybe thing the thing that helps save the world. Not to be too dramatic about it, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Doing our part, you know, from different angles, you know, it's so important. It. Now, with budget cuts, we are seeing a lot of school boards cutting funding for music, which just breaks my heart for, you know, all the reasons that we've been talking about. I mean, the skills are so valuable. You know, the evidence shows the direct connection between music, right. and all of these skills we're talking about. So what what are some things we can do to negotiate, if you will, to help save music programs in our school systems? What are some things our listeners or viewers can do to make this a priority? I think what we can do is try to get involved with our local school boards, whether you're on the board or just actively showing up to meetings as a parent and parent groups yeah. and, and bring some of the research into those environments and, and show them, you know, some of them are aware, certainly, and they're, they're making very hard decisions. You know, I understand it's not it's not easy to budget things in the school, but the more evidence, you know, research based evidence that we can put in front of them to show them how, you know, having maintaining these levels of music education in schools, how it benefits the other things that they're looking at and paying more attention to is a good thing. And yeah. just just. Gently, you know, we can't jump up and shout and all that, you know, it's yeah. just, that's not the way to, to win, win favors. It's, you know, it's by just consistently showing them the evidence that should be moving them in the direction yeah. that, that would be better for the kids. Yeah. Well, and it's funny. Yeah, that was a perfect answer because it hits on, I think, a couple of things. One, the importance of promoting about the importance of music and how to go about it, but also in the broader negotiations. What Vincent just said there for our listeners, that is pure gold when you're negotiating, regardless of what you're negotiating. We have been so conditioned to focus on what we want, very ego driven approaches. And Vincent is absolutely right. The way to get the outcomes that you want is not chest beating or pounding the table or insisting on getting your way, but finding out what serves the other part of your party. So I totally agree with Vincent and I encourage all of you out there listening. And I'd say even elevate school boards, absolutely. And depending on where you are, if you're in Canada, go to your provincial and your federal. If you're in the U.S., right. your state and your and the federal, find out where the money's coming from and be lobbying. But lobby in a way, not just beating your chest about don't take our money. Talk about the benefits that music will create the leaders we need for the future. You know, music is the, the missing link to ensure that we have creative problem solving to avoid the kind of polarization we're seeing. Find out what they want and need and then show them so that they come to the conclusion that what you're advocating for is actually in their best interest, too. So oh, absolutely. And to their credit, there are a number of organizations that are doing that sort of, right. you know, uh, outreach, whether it's the National Association for Music Merchants or the National Association for Music Education. I mean, they have chapters and, you know, and sub organizations that work, you know, talk to different elements of the government, constantly putting that message. But what we can do at our own local level is so important yeah. uh, because that those leaders aren't often hearing it. Yeah, beautiful. And can music, I mean, I often say that our first and most important negotiation is negotiating our own mindset. And, you know, as you were speaking <laughs> earlier about how negotiation can help us, or how music can help us negotiate, you know, that discipline and that creativity and that inspiration piece as well. Any other ways that you can think of where music can help negotiate our mindset to get us in? I think you'd mentioned about grounding as well, which is so important. I hadn't thought of that. Well, whether you're listening to music, as we talked about, or, you know, taking up an instrument or playing an instrument that you have, you know, when you're actually playing an instrument, your focus is on the here and now and what I'm doing. You're not worried about, you know, what happened at your job yesterday, the negotiation you have to do tomorrow, what's going on at home. You know, you're perfectly grounding your mind into that moment 
and working your brain in such ways that you're just releasing all the stresses of everything else. And that anxiety releasing feeling that you get through playing music, you know, leads you to a better balance. It's going to help yeah. you for, you know, what you have on your plate for tomorrow or this afternoon or whatever it is. And it's hard to carve out time to do things, but we encourage adults, you know, no matter what your age, I mean, I had a guitar student didn't start playing until he was 80 years young. Wow. So never, never too late to start, you know, pick up an instrument, whether it's the keyboard, whether it's a guitar, ukulele, or even drums. We've had senior citizens take up drums, you know, which is amazing to me and awesome. You know, pick up something and for no other reason than for your own therapeutic feelings that you can get out of the experience that will help you live a more happier and ultimately more successful life at negotiating and everything else that you're trying to, to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned about the octogenarian because as you're saying that, it got me <laughs> to thinking like certainly music helps develop young minds and create that pathway, as you say, between the right and left hemispheres of the brain, but also for people who are older, I think it helps stave off Alzheimer's or dementia or things like that. Keep it. It's that keeping those connections open and yep. firing. It's, it's, right? it's helping to maintain our brain activity, you know, yeah. whether you're doing crosswords, seek and find playing music, different kind of mental activities, playing chess, you know, the, you know, having social situations. These are all these different things that we need to do, maintain, you know, as we yeah. get older yeah. uh, that are going to help us, you know, live happier, longer. I love that. Yeah. And, I, and I'm embarrassed to say I haven't played the clarinet in years. I mean, I played quite seriously from grade seven to 13. And then I didn't after that. Well, that's okay. I haven't touched my trombone in, in probably equally as long. <laughs> but, you know, there are other more, you know, accessible, you know, yeah. ukulele or keyboard yeah. or something, you know. Yeah. Something else to have a little fun with. Yeah. Well, we yeah, my mother-in-law just gave us, a, she moved to a smaller place and we just got her piano. So I may, I may try and take there it. There you go. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. And they say one in two people now are going to get dementia. So I, I will stave it off by learning piano. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now we had talked about showing up with confidence and how key that is in negotiations. And I know, I think a lot of people coming into negotiations because of all that conditioning about seeing it as a conflict driven model instead of a collaborative right. one, I think they get really nervous or anxious. And, and again, it struck me as you were talking about listening to music to get into that mood that you want. Music could be a great way to help, you know, calm the nervous system of somebody about to go into a negotiation. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? I, I guess both playing and listening. What, what are, what are you? No, thoughts? absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm, I haven't done a whole a lot of in my mind active negotiations in my life but whenever i know i have to talk to someone about something that i might need to negotiate you get that little bit of angst going on yeah unless you're something you know that you're used to doing all the time which i'm not so you know listening to something that's calming or for me sitting at the piano and just dueling around for a little bit i'm not yeah. need to play anything serious just kind of relax and then just go back to what it is i need to do and i do that even if if whether it's negotiating in person or if I'm typing an important right. email, sometimes I just need to take my hands up, put yeah. my mind somewhere else for a little bit, you know, yeah. sometimes I'll just go doodle doodle over here or listen to something over here and then I'll come back and then my brain is back in a good spot to be able to talk about something or write about something that before yeah. I was kind of like, uh, <laughs> Well, and I think the beauty of music is it allows you to focus on what you're doing, which grounds you, but it's one of those rare things where you can sort of multitask because I, I don't know about you, but I find with music, you're focused on what you're doing and somehow you're also, it seems to create the space for you to process <laughs> other stuff that's being muddled around up there. <laughs> that's what Einstein did. He would sit there at the piano, you know, with a pad of paper on the bench and he would play a little bit and then he'd have an idea. He'd pick it up. Yeah. Jot it down put the pad down, play a little bit more into the next thing and pick it up, the pad, write down a little bit more. You know, it's it's really powerful. Yeah. So what, what better testament is that? So again, for our listeners and viewers, <laughs> if you want to be in the company of Einstein, <laughs> get out there and start supporting your music programs and engage yourself. Now, I was wondering, what's one of the most sort of surprising or shocking things that you discovered in the work that you've been doing since you started this? That we're really just kind of scratching the surface of mm. how powerful music is in our, to our brain, the uh, sound energy in general, how powerful sound energy can be to our brain and how it interacts with different parts of our brain. And, and I think we're just really at the beginning of what's possible. Yeah. And uh, to me, I'm excited to, to keep learning and what the information they put out and seeing where it goes. Yeah, I love that. And, and thanks for all you do on that, getting the word out there and, and elevating people's awareness about it. And again, for our listeners, our viewers out there, I really invite you 
to continue this discussion, right? Talk to other people uh, in yeah. your network, within your communities. And because it's only the more we elevate the conversation, the more people will be able to start digging. And, and I agree with you, Vincent. I, th I think we're just... A lot of things people used to consider woo-woo, you know, way back in the day. <laughs> the, the We've learned a lot is, since then. <laughs> yes, and the science is catching up. So, I mean, yes. we know a lot of the positive benefits of music and how it can impact to allow us to be better, stronger versions of ourselves in so many ways. So why not be scratching at that? So, yes, I love that. And I can't, this has been absolutely fabulous. I normally like to end by asking, what is one of the greatest mindset shifts that you've ever had in your life? It doesn't have to be about this. It could be on absolutely anything, just but one of those things that happened where you have that aha moment. To me, the aha moment came somewhere in my later adulthood. It was just the uh, self-development realization that, you know, I always need to be improving to be a better person, to be a better listener. Being a better listener is really what it comes yeah. down to. Learning how to be a better listener, and I, you know, I can't point out one particular experience, but it was a number of experiences that led me to come to the important realization that I needed to become a better listener, and that's something that you know, over the last several years, I've done a lot better with, and I'm by no means at the final destination. Yeah. <laughs> we're all, we're always needing to grow and learn, and be yeah. you know, the better version of ourselves. Oh, and what what a, a perfect note to be able to end on, no pun intended, <laughs> to be able to end on, because I don't think we talked about listening as one of the skills that we were, but music absolutely enhances our ability to listen more carefully, listen more critically, to absorb more, to hear things in different ways, right? And right, to right. apply it differently. And that is probably one of the most important skills in being an effective negotiator and recognizing that all of life is a negotiation, right? It's not just about yep. business. And you'd mentioned a couple of times, well, I don't really negotiate much. And, uh, and, and I challenge you on that, Vincent, because I bet, <laughs> you know, whether it's with your intimate partner, whether it's with, you know, the ki kids that you deal with, or for people, if you've got your own kids, a, a service providers, we are constantly negotiating, negotiating with ourselves constantly. So, and we're terrible listeners in North America in particular. We are not very good listeners. So what a fabulous way to help hone that critical skill as well. I love it. Yes, yes. So where can people learn more about you, Vincent? Give us all the ways and we'll make sure to put it in the show notes for them as well, about you and about uh, the programs. Yeah, the best way to find us is always keepmusicalive.org, uh, keepmusicalive.org and everything else can be found off of that. Or you can send a carrier pigeon to Philadelphia and send <laughs> it our way and I'll uh, put my hand up and wait for them to come down. Yeah, so beautiful. And who would have thought that music can make you a better negotiator, that music can help you get more of what you want in life, both personally and professionally. So thanks so much. It's been a lot of fun, Vincent, and an eye opener for me as well. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you're very welcome, Cindy. Thank you so much for having me on today. Yeah. And for our listeners, I have no doubt that you got lots of value from this episode. This has been really eye opening. And it, and I think we've just scratched the surface. I'm sure by, I'm going to be sparking with more and more. I'll be driving you crazy, Vincent, reaching out. Here's another thing I just thought of. <laughs> So make sure to subscribe if you have not already subscribed and also give the gift of sharing. Make sure to share this episode with other people in your life. The more we can spread the word about this concept, but also about the great work that Vincent and his partner, Joanne, are doing out in the world, support that, buy their books, knowing that 50% is going to go back and be doing good. So make sure that you are giving the gift of sharing. And just before we sign off, I wanted to share some ways that we can work together. If you happen to be looking to up-level your negotiation skills, I've got everything from online to group to mastermind signature one-on-one -on -one VIP experiences available. So if you're looking to leverage your innate power to get more of what you want and deserve in life, check it out at artoffemininenegotiation.com. And make sure to grab a copy of the book, Art of Feminine Negotiation, How to Get What You Want from the Boardroom to the Bedroom, if you haven't already done that. And that is a wrap for this episode. So until next time, Go forth and negotiate your best life on your terms so you can stop missing out and start getting more of what you want and deserve from the boardroom to the bedroom. Until next time, take care.